with the first pick. With the second pick. With the third pick. With the fourth pick. Crashing the boards. Select. Hello and welcome to Crashing the Boards, episode number four. Already, I know we said already next week or last week when it was episode three, right, Jordan? And now it's four, and it's still like it's flying by. Yeah, it absolutely is, and time flies when you're having fun. I mean, that's always been true, and I think that this definitely applies here. It's always fun to look at these players, and man, I can't believe it's been a month already. Well, I guess five weeks can be a month, whatever. I'm I haven't taken a math class in <laughs> quite a while, but. Um, definitely fun. And I, I can't believe we've already been four weeks in four weeks in after today, we'll have covered 12 prospects. Of course, you can go back and look at our old episodes. They're all on YouTube. Just search crashing the boards, subscribe to our channel, like rate review, share with your friends, whatever, whatever it is, we appreciate it. Uh, no matter what, but, uh, today Jordan and I are going to discuss Florida's Trey man, Illinois, Io DeSunma and UC Santa Barbara's Ja'Cory McLaughlin. Looking forward to talking about all these guys. Ja'Cory is, is one of my favorites, uh, probably that we'll cover on this entire show um, throughout the course. But we're going to start in Florida, down in Gainesville. Trey Mann, six foot four, 172-pound point guard, 16 points per game, 3.4 assists, 5.6 rebounds, 45% from the field, 40% from three on 4.6 attempts and 83% from the free throw line. Jordan, when we look at Trey Mann, uh, we actually talked about Davion Mitchell last year, and Davion was a guy that uh, had a breakout year, just went nuts from from the year before to to this one. Trey Mann is a guy whose stats definitely jumped up uh, this season, but not only did his stats jump up, he grew two inches and 15 pounds. So, uh, the first note that I have, I'll ask you, uh, you know, his growth, is, is it, and not not just his physical growth, but um, his numbers, um, you, do you feel like it's for real? Yeah, man, I was going to say he grew literally and figuratively. Yeah. Um, he grew literally with the two-inch growth spurt or whatever, and he still could be growing, which is kind of a scary thought. Um, but secondly, on the court, I think it's legit because he shows a really – diverse and mature like scoring profile um he's a knockdown sharpshooter from deep he can hit off the catch he can hit off the bounces pull up shots i like um people kind of have some things to talk about with his form that he has like a low release and i think it's not that big of a deal um really good range he took a lot of tough shots for florida last season or i guess this season however you look at it and did well smooth handle um he flashes a really good floater that I don't expect a guy like him to have, but it's really quality. Um, relies on craftiness at the rim. He's not really an elite athlete, so I think that kind of plays to his advantage as a scorer sometimes. And then as a distributor, like you look 3.5 assists per game or whatever it was, that doesn't do justice. Like he's not an elite passer, but I think he can make a lot of solid reads. The growth spurt helped him in the pick and roll. Um, you can see over defenders a little easier now. So he kind of makes those reads with a sense of urgency, but still maintains solid composure. So he did take a major leap. Um, part of that is just opportunity and getting more comfortable in your own skin and playing. But I think he's an improved player for sure. And I think that he's a guy that we've seen a lot of mock drafts have him mid first round or something like that. And his play kind of justifies that. Yeah. He he's an interesting guy to me because he doesn't pop out um, athletically. Uh, you know, he, he definitely, all, all these guys are, are athletic, right? But when you talk about yeah. a quick burst, a quick first step, whatever it is, um, he might not be that guy. He, he finds his space by by kind of lulling defenders to sleep. He's uh, a little bit wiggly, um, and and he's got, like you said, he's got a nice floater in the lane. Uh, great jump shot as well, whether it's uh, off the bounce or set, shoot, or set shots, excuse me, 40% from three, is interesting to me because I I thought his jump shot was fluid, it's confident, but it's a slightly low release, which 
probably works better when you're six, four rather than six, two. Right. But, uh, it'll be interesting to see how consistent that is at, at the next level, especially if he's handling the, the, the ball most of the time for his squad. Um, so, and, and he shoots 83% from the free throw line too. So if an NBA team gets him in the, uh, in the gym and wants to change his, his uh, fundamentals or mechanics a little bit, I'm sure he'll be able to do that and, and not uh, lose too much as far as shooting consistency goes. Yeah, I think so too. And the low release is kind of a, not a worry point or even a question mark, but um, I think that it's something just to keep an eye on. And he's improved as a shooter from the free throw line, from the field, from deep. So I think that he'll be fine. Um, but that's always something you kind of keep an eye on if you're an NBA team. It's it's easy for us to sit back and say, well, we're not making an investment in him personally. So not that big of a deal. But then if you're an NBA team that's going to spend a first run pick on him, it's something that you at least have to note and and watch over time. Yeah. And, and you talked about his facilitation a little bit. Um, the notes that I have on, on his passing are basically this, like he can make good passes, accurate passes, put some velocity on it. That's a word that you like to use. I know, um, mm-hmm. put some velocity on passes, but he doesn't necessarily make advanced reads. Um, he's not crushing the defense with his, with his facilitation. Um, yeah, he can get into the lane. And and like we said, if there's an open man on the wing or, um, you know, if the roller is going to be open for a lob, whatever it may be, he'll hit that pass. But, um, there are some really good passers in this draft. And I think Trey Mann is a formidable passer, but not necessarily the, the flashy, uh, the, the flashy passer. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And that was my first question mark is, can he make that next step? He makes those basic reads and stuff you'd expect from a point guard that has the ball in his hands a lot, but he processes relatively quickly. That can improve. Um, He could speed that process up. He could make more advanced reads in the pick and roll. Hopefully that guard spurt will help him a little bit more than it even has. Like if he's going to, he has the diverse profiles of score where he can create his own space that way. But in order to be that starting caliber point guard for an NBA team, you got to be able to do it for other people too, unless you're only that scoring guy. So um, it could be a matter of reps, or it could just be that's who Trey Mann is as a player. And that's going to, I think, dictate kind of his trajectory in the NBA. Yeah. And you mentioned where mock drafts have him. Um, he's another guy. We talked about one last week that uh, there's not really a consensus on where he's going to be drafted. And I think you got to think about it in, in this context, right? He, he was a consensus five-star recruit, McDonald's All-American 2019, right? This is his second year. He's yeah. played two years at Florida, right? He went from 6'2 to 6'4 and gained 15 pounds. And when you're 19 and you, you grow that much, a lot of times you got to grow into your body a little bit, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, again, question mark is – the perfect term here there's a good chance that i mean we already know he's a great athlete and a great basketball player when he grows into his body a little more he he has a pretty high ceiling um but you know the the downside is uh, maybe some teams won't believe that he'll grow into his body and and the lack of burst and um maybe this the slower the slower handles um could be a could be an issue at the next level but definitely a high ceiling here jordan yeah i'm with you and then also you added can he grow into his frame that was my second question mark is how will he mature in close range situations which kind of that goes hand in hand um he's been getting stronger he's been adding weight he's gonna have to keep doing so in order to reach his ceiling not always the most comfortable attacking the rim he sometimes seems to shy away from contact and stuff like that so lacks that elite athleticism lacks the elite size and strength um, and bulk to his body. But if he can do that, he's going to be a lot more comfortable in those situations. He's going to be willing to embrace contact. He's going to get to the free throw line more good free throw shooter. That's going to help him out. Um, And then will he figure it out defensively? Not that he's a poor defender. Um, I definitely wouldn't say that the ability is there. The foot speed is there on the perimeter. The length is good. Um, But the fundamentals, like can he pick up on rotations quick enough um, does he have the anticipation? I've seen a couple plays where he got into passing lanes and, and made some plays. Um, his angles need a little bit of work, just stuff like that, where the the meat of Trey Mann's profiles there, 
but then maybe you want some potatoes on the side, like you want to grab a drink or something like that. Like the meal is already pretty good, but you just need to add a couple things to really spice it up. And then you're looking at a really solid player. Yeah. So again, we're not a mock draft show, but if you had a guess, um, you know, what's, what's Trey man's range in your opinion? I have him as mid to late round one, like Mm -hmm. after 15, but before like 25, probably in that range. And then um, I'll just give my quick one sentence summary, Um, sharp shooting point guard who can possibly run an offense if improvement continues in decision-making and precision passing. Love it. Love it. That's Trey man. We'll move on to another school with orange in their colors, right? Uh, Illinois Io Dasunmu, one of my favorites to watch this year, uh, for a couple of reasons. We'll get into it. Uh, six foot five, one hundred eighty-five pound point guard. He started all ninety games that he played at Illinois. Um, very consistent player. This last season, twenty point one four points per game, five point two five assists to go with three point three turnovers, uh, six point three rebounds. from the field on 15 attempts a game, three, excuse me, 38% from three on 2.9 attempts and 78% from the free throw line. Jordan, I'll let you kick it off, but I'd like to start with just his frame. I I owe six, five, 185 pounds. And I, I would guess low, low body fat percentage, uh, an imposing, imposing player on the wing. Yeah, absolutely. And I've even seen some places list him at 200 pounds. Like he is Mm. going to be a quality. I think the defense is one of the things that jumped out to me. I mean, he has the good height. He has the good length and size, extremely high effort player on that. end. he's switchable, um, instinctive, high IQ. He played in college for a while, so he knows what's going on there. Quick feet, um, off ball awareness is great. I think that size is going to help him um, as a guy that attacks the rim and can embrace contact. And then on defense, a guy that can switch, I mean, that can pick up your bigger point guards, your bigger shooting guards, Um, not to call him like a Drew Holiday or anything, because those guys, you can't just go and say, oh, I want to pick Drew Holiday off a tree and have him switch on to Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. Like, that's not going to happen. But um, Io is one of the better defending point guards, and I think that his frame is a big reason why. Yeah, there were times in college where I think he would switch on to a four, um, or even a really big three, and, and he could hold his own, right? You saw him get posted up a few times, um, and you, like like I said, he held his own. He doesn't get back down too easily. Um, yeah, defensively, he can switch, and, and you love that. You love that in a guy, um, a guy like him. And then he talked about the offensive end a little bit. He's a consistent guy, right? He took a lot of shots, you know, 15 attempts a game, Um but that's Illinois. I mean, that's that's the system he played in, right? He had to take a lot of shots. Um, but as far as facilitation goes, I think he makes the right reads. He's kind of similar to Trey Mann in the sense that he's not making crazy passes. Um, he's not, you know, maybe not advanced in, in that category, but he makes the right play. Uh, and we saw a lot of pick and roll with him and uh, Kofi Coburn and – I mean, mm-hmm. that was a really, really fun combo to watch. And so I think he can he can run an, an NBA offense. Um, you know, th- there are certainly some developmental points, but um, again, consistent player and um, a safe bet. Yeah, I think so too. And to the point about the facilitating, I think on the flip side, he makes some risky passes. Like he kind of has a little bit of a high turnover rate. He made some of those passes where you're just like, no, 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 no. And then if it works out, you're like, yes, but if it doesn't, then don't do that. Um, But he's that confident in his ability to like fit passes in where they need to go and process and run an offense. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. um, And that he's not going to step in and get the keys to an NBA offense from day one. Um, I just don't think he's that level of a player. Um, Not a lot of guys are. That's tough to do. So that's going to help him kind of get back to the basics and iron some of that out. He makes really fantastic reads, um, improving as a passer and a shooter overall. And I think the other thing that I noted for positives, he has an attacking mindset. He's a blur in transition. He can grab and go, uh, make solid passes down the court. 
He weaves in and out of traffic, um, goes hard to the rim and embraces contact. And his handle, there's a little wiggle there. Like he's a little shifty um, and he can create some space. So I think there's a lot to like about him in that regard. Yeah, and the confidence is a big factor, right? When you're you're talking about a guy that, that's going to go probably mid first round, um, maybe lottery, maybe right on the edge. Who, who knows? But um, a guy with confidence like his, uh, the the sky's the limit. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think if you're going to post a picture after a conference championship game of you holding the trophy in the bathroom like Kobe Bryant, uh, you've got to have you've got to have some good confidence <laughs> to you, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I like Io. I think that uh, there, there are some question marks here, right? I think one is whether or not he's a three-point shooter. Um, yeah. You know, sure, 38% from three, only 2.9 attempts. Most of the, the threes that he attempted were pretty wide open. He's not necessarily creating shots for himself from beyond the arc. Um, 34% in his career on 3.5 attempts in his career again. Um, there is a lack of consistency beyond the arc and especially in today's game a lot of point guards need to have at least some ability to um to hit from deep to put some pressure on defenses to force guys over top of screens uh and it'll be interesting to see if he can develop that part of his game yeah and i think he has a low release point on his jumper too and he doesn't always get a consistent amount of elevation on that um the only question mark i wrote down was can he elevate more and that's with his jump shot, um, with his release point, with his base. And also he's kind of a below the rim player sometimes, Mm -hmm. like in terms of how he finishes. And he's a really solid rebounder. So I think eventually he's going to figure out um, his spacing and where he needs to be. But that also kind of limits his versatility as a finisher on the offensive end. So if he can improve that, um, that's going to be the whole package offensively because he can dish out dimes. um, He can create the space. The shot looks like it's improving, um, but if they're investing in him, them meaning a team, they're going to have to fully buy into that improvement. Yep. And the last question mark I have before I I have you summarize um, is his finishing ability. He heavily favors the right side and his right hand. Um, So again, it'd be interesting to see if he can develop, uh, develop the the attacking mindset and uh, start to get to the left a little bit, start to be able to finish both sides. Um, and like you said, uh, finished above the rim rather, rather than underneath. Yeah. So, um, overall my quick summary is just that he's, he's a, a good solid player, uh, should have a pretty long NBA career, whether or not he's an all-star all NBA, whatever it is. Um, you know, he's got some growth, but he, he'll be solid. But what's your summary summary? I have him written down as a shifty combo guard with, um, immense defensive potential and innate leadership qualities. I, I really do buy into that um, maturity and leadership that he shows and stuff like that matters throughout the draft process and it matters throughout um, an NBA career. So I like that about him. And I know that was way more than one sentence. <laughs> That's all right. Summary is a summary, man. I like it. So we'll move on to my favorite guy on this show, um, on this particular episode. And maybe, like I said at the top, um, maybe maybe my favorite guy that will break down Totally. And he's a guy you may not have heard of. He's a guy that doesn't pop up on many mock drafts. Uh, if any, I'm not sure I've seen him on one yet. Um, and Jordan, we, we can talk about that in a minute. But he's Ja'Cory McLaughlin, six foot four, 190 pound combo guard out of UC Santa Barbara. This last season averaged 16 points per game, 5.2 assists to 1.96 turnovers, which is a really, really nice ratio. Uh, 3.4 rebounds, 48% from the field, 40% from three on 3.9 attempts and 83% from the free throw line. Now I want to give folks a little bit of a background on Ja'Cory here. So yes, he's a mid-major player. He spent a couple of years at UC Santa Barbara, but if you go back to his high school career, he was a four-star recruit out of Seattle, Seattle area. He averaged 10 and a half points and three assists in his freshman year at Oregon state. Um, so he, he ended up uh, play. He, he did play in the Pac-12 for a year, did a nice job um, as a freshman, uh, ultimately redshirted, uh, redshirted, that's a tough word to say, redshirted <laughs> his sophomore year, uh, and then transferred to UC Santa Barbara, and he started every game for three years there. So um, Jordan, another one of those guys, he's super consistent. 
Um, and he is a guy that uh, I'd be comfortable putting the ball in his hands in, in most situations. Yeah, I, I put trust for like the main positive with him. And as a facilitator, he's extremely mature, accurate passes. He takes care of the basketball. Um, he makes advanced reads. He's an elite decision maker, like one of the better ones in this class. And it's ridiculous that he's not popping up in mock drafts. I'm sure we'll elaborate on that point here in a minute. And as a scorer, he's diverse. He can do a little bit of everything, I think. Um, he can score. He can play off the ball a little bit um, and get open that way. He has really good poise and pacing. He's He just seems in control. And you can say that about a lot of guys, but it truly applies with him. Um, he sets up his moves in succession. He, You can tell he puts in the work in the gym. He just looks comfortable out there and fluid and in control and happy to be out there. Um, good body control around the rim. Good shooter. He's efficient. Like there, There's nothing to not like, I think, about him offensively. He, whether he has the ball in his hands looking to pass or – looking to put the ball in the basket yeah his highlight reel uh just passes alone are are pretty incredible there's some flashy mm -hmm. ones there's some uh some passes you don't expect anyone to make uh you know through traffic uh skip passes passes from under the bucket to the other side of the the three-point line just some some wild stuff that he's able to do passing the ball but he's a legitimate three-level scorer as well he's got a really smooth and comfortable release from deep um again around four attempts per game shot 40 percent from the the three-point line mid-range game we'll roll some clips now uh super smooth mid-range game he knows how to get open you mentioned that already um he, he knows how to get that shot and he's confident comfortable and will pull it quick when he's got the space and then as far as finishing at the rim goes same thing like he is he's comfortable he's got a nice frame six foot four 190 pounds probably by draft time i'd assume he'll put in enough work to get up to 200 205 maybe mm -hmm. um he can finish too and, and so he mixes that scoring ability with that advanced ability to read defenses and we're talking about uh potentially a really good long-term nba point guard can't why not we're calling him a combo guard but um when, when you talk about uh, his role in an nba team handling the ball handling the offense facilitating initiating etc and it's crazy that we're saying all of that. And we say it about guys that are first round picks. This is a guy who we both think should go and probably will go at some point in the second round. The mock drop sites don't have him on their radar at all. Like if you even look up scouting reports on him, there's Pretty like empty. two out there. I yeah. looked and I was like, this is, it, it's sad. He's such a good player. Um, he has so many good qualities that NBA teams will like. And I think that that will separate from, um, the scouting process from the amateur scouts and just the people um, sitting at home watching versus the NBA teams that get to sit down and meet with him and talk to him and break down his game further. There's a lot to like. I'm sure he's not an elite athlete. Like if you really have to nitpick to find things that he's a mid-major player, like you really have to sit and think of reasons why he's not going to be a productive NBA player, not necessarily a great one, but if you're getting value in that second round, you're getting a decade long backup point guard that you can trust to come in and do the right thing there is a ton of value in that i think yeah man so so let me ask you this it brings up a good point we're not finished breaking down to Corey quite yet but i want to i want a little sidebar here what is your process when it comes to evaluating prospects not specific prospects but just scouting college basketball in general and finding some guys like what what's your process I'm kind of like you. I try not to look at the numbers first. Like if I hear about a player, I'll just go watch them and I'll kind of see um, what I do, especially I'll make a football reference. I try to watch one good game, um, one bad game, and then a couple average ones just to kind of see, because you can watch a good game or a highlight reel and say, oh, this guy could be really good, but is every game going to be like that? Not necessarily. Um, and then conversely, you can watch a bad game and say this guy's not going to be good at all but not every game is going to be like that. So kind of just diversifying the mix of um, not watching the highlight reel because you can make any player look really good from that. Um, seeing, noting like four or five things that they have like go to. And that's the thing with Jacory. He doesn't really have a lot of one trick type things that he does. Like if you're writing good things that he does, it's everything. It's passing um, with poise. It's being composed. It's finding 
his own space. It's creating his own shot. It's attacking the rim. It's three point shooting. It's taking care of the basketball. It's so much. Then after that, um, I try not to list a ton of negatives for players and we call them question marks because ultimately they are question marks and they're things that could turn into positives um, throughout that draft process, throughout an NBA career. Then you go through and do that. But by the time you have all the good stuff there, you've already built a case for that prospect and you kind of go from there. Um, So I think that it just part of it's word of mouth because a lot of people, anyone watching this, maybe they haven't heard of Ja'Cory before. They say, oh, well, I'll go watch him. Um, and part of it is just kind of going out and doing it. I, and that kind of applies to everything, but it's it's a good mix of both, I think. Yeah, it, mine's mine's similar to that. So so I'll take you to preseason before this before the year even starts. Uh, I sit down, I look at all my notes from the year before, uh, all my scouting notes, and I see which guys are coming back that I've I've put stars next to, guys mm-hmm. that I like. Uh, which guys are coming back? That co- goes for mid majors. It goes for major conferences it goes for some g league guys and some international guys right so i I check those out i say okay these guys are coming back got to watch their games etc then i actually go back to last year's conference um all all conference awards so first first team through third team or whatever they have newcomers of the year freshman teams whatever it is um and at that point i'll look at some numbers if they're mid-major guys i'll kind of say okay this guy was a freshman of the year Uh, what did he do? Uh, All right. These are some numbers that kind of pop out. Um, And then I'll watch his tape from the year before and I'll decide, okay, this is a guy I'm going to watch this year. This is a guy, maybe not, whatever. For Ja'Cory, I'm not going to pretend I'm the first guy to ever discover Ja'Cory McLaughlin. There's no chance uh, that's the case, but I I went back and I looked at, um, you know, his conferences, all conference teams. I saw, okay, this guy's six foot four, point guard did a lot of really good things great assist to turnover ratio i pull him up i watch his tape from last year like wow he's good watch some film this year like that's that's how i uh, that's that's kind of how i became a jacory mclaughlin fan i think a lot of people will look at mock drafts <laughs> honestly i think yeah. they they look they, at they mock do. drafts they look they look at players not one through 60 but maybe one through 70 or 80 and they're like oh okay these guys are pretty good and that's how guys get overlooked um you know, Jacory's not popping out to anyone because he's not he's not on all these mock drafts and people are missing a really, really good player. And um, it's a shame, but I'm glad we I'm glad you're watching our show now. I'm glad you get to watch his clips and, and hear what we have to say about him. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase this. It it doesn't go one through sixty. Like a lot of people will watch or I guess read and say, Oh, those are the top sixty players in this year's draft, and there's there's no debate about it. Like that's it. Yeah. Bleacher reporter, whoever did their mock draft, those are the 60 players to watch for. Um, and that's how it's going to go. And even in football, baseball, all this stuff, those rankings or those mock drafts, something is going to happen where it deviates from what is listed. Either someone's going to quote unquote reach, which I hate that word. Um, or somebody's going to fall due to something we may not even know about um, that happened throughout the draft process or just bad luck or whatever happens, guys are going to go that aren't on lists and guys may not go that are on lists. That's just how it goes. So if you do the homework and, and find the guys that you like, and I like what you said about going through the all conference teams, because that is a really easy way to screen through guys that may have slipped under the radar, like Ja'Cory. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't even think about that. So I'm definitely going to copy off of you and, and start doing that. Do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, let's get back to Ja'Cory for a second. Some question marks. Um, there are a few, just like with any guy, like if there were yeah. no question marks, we'd be talking about Ja'Cory in the top five, right? Like that's just how it works. Um, but it, these are truly question marks as well. We haven't seen elite burst from him. Um, and we've talked about it in other shows. Sometimes that's just a product of, uh, the system they run in. Sometimes that maybe is a problem, uh, that maybe they don't have that burst. I've seen some flashes from Ja'Cory of, of burst. Um, we've seen him make defenders pay for falling asleep, put a foot wrong. Um, Ja'Cory goes past you. So perhaps a question mark, um, the, the burst one V one defending will be interesting as well. And, Again, we just haven't seen that athleticism at, at a, a really elite level. Maybe that's a product of who he's playing against as well. 
right? And and again, I, no no slight to to mid major teams. There are a lot of mid major guys and teams and coaches that I really really like. Um, but again, you wonder how how is he going to do against the elite athleticism, um, very athletic NBA guards. Uh, but one thing you can hang your hat on, if you're a Jacory fan, he's got a high IQ. He's got a, a great understanding of the game. Um, you know, he's he's got a great support system as well. I, I noticed. Uh, well, Seattle Seattle basketball players really like to lift each other up, whether it's uh, younger Isaiah Thomas or Jamal Crawford or whoever it may be. Um, and, and it seems like a lot of a lot of those Seattle guys really embrace Jacory. And um, you know, I th- I think that <laughs> I really think he's going to be a, a long time NBA player. I really do. Yeah, I think so too. And those were my two question marks as well. Um, and I read an article that brought up I wish I remembered what the the rating was for defense and I don't really put much stock into defensive ratings and he was above average but to that point the system who knows the athleticism who knows like that's a big jump to go from that to the NBA I'm nothing against mid-majors at all like you said I love mid-majors but it has to be noted that that is a significant leap that he's going to be making and he does show flashes of having really quick feet and he knows where he needs to be and I think that will help him. He can anticipate things that are going to happen and he can yeah. react extremely quick, um, has the great IQ. So that always makes up for it in any sport, at least a little bit. But um, in those situations where you will need that, does he have it? And he's shown flashes that he might. And if he doesn't, I think you're still getting a reliable player. But if he does, then maybe that raises the ceiling even more. Yeah. And for everyone that says, well, he did it all against mid-major teams, like, listen, listen, we already mentioned it. He was able to do it as a freshman in the Pac-12 as well. Yeah. So, um, f- please, in every argument you ever make, do not bring up what level these of basketball these guys are playing in. And if you do, I've got no time for you. <laughs> Let's talk about the tape. Let's talk about what they do well, what they don't do well. Let's not talk about who they're playing against, please. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, let me get your summary of Ja'Cory McLaughlin. I wrote down for my summary that I was going to kick it back to you because I know <laughs> if anyone can summarize him, it's going to be you. Jacory has all the tools, right? The summary is not just on paper, but on tape. This guy can navigate a defense. He can facilitate. He can score. He can basically do anything you need him to do. We haven't seen him play off the ball a ton, but I think he'll be able to do that as well uh, if needed. And so this is a really, really solid pick. It's a guy that his ceiling maybe is all-star, but, you know, to, to make sure we're not spouting off a bunch of hot takes here, <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say that Ja'Cory will be a longtime pro mm-hmm. um, and, and a really, really good pro. Yeah, I think so too. And he's just reliable. And sometimes every team needs that guy whether it's coming off the bench, whether it's in the starting lineup, whether it's in the locker room. I mean, he's going to get on the court. I have no doubts about that. That guy that can just do the right thing and be where he's supposed to be and buy into winning. And if he dominates the ball, it's going to be the best ball dominant, like team minutes you're going to find. He's not a guy that dances around a lot and wastes dribbles and isn't a great passer. If he has the ball, he is purposeful with it. He's going to score. He's going to set himself up to score, or he's going to set his teammate up to score. And that's just how he plays. Um, really selfless player. And I think he's going to be good. I mean, there's there's no reason why he can't be good, even if he doesn't have that elite athleticism, even if he's a average defender, or even a slight minus. He's still going to be a good player. And last thing I'll say, really, really nice kid. Really, mm-hmm. really nice guy. Um and yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jacory does buy stock. Now we're telling you, we're begging you buy Jacory McLaughlin stock. Uh, you're going to see his name soon. No, no question. Yep. Jordan, that's our three guys. Trey Mann, Io Desunmu, and Jacory McLaughlin. That's episode four. Final thoughts? It's in the books. Man, um, there there was some behind the scenes stuff that led to us kind of getting a late uh, recording done, um, but man, it, it's been a blast so far. And I think that as we keep doing this, um, shedding more light on prospects, that it, people are going to start catching on to it even more. Um, and these guys, they all need light shed on them. 
they all need to be talked about. They're they're in that conversation for a reason, um, some more than others, but it, it's been a fun process. Absolutely. And speaking of shedding light on some guys next week, make sure you join us. We got two guys that you've probably heard of, Scotty Barnes, Jonathan Kaminga, uh, both really good players. And we're going to actually talk about two other prospects. Um, we'll talk about international prospect, Renz Blyenberg, who is uh, he's a pretty good player. And he's kind of mock draft wise. Some have him second rounds. I've seen some that have him the very last pick, some that don't have him at all. But um, he's a good player, an interesting prospect. And then we're going to talk about a guy that didn't even play Division One basketball, uh, Division One NCAA basketball anyway. Um, and you know what? I'm going to keep his name a secret. I'm just going to use it as a teaser. Come check us out there you go. next week. Four <laughs> prospects with one uh, that you've almost definitely never heard of. Until then. Stay right, stay real. God bless. With the first pick. With the second pick. With the third pick. With the fourth pick. Crashing the boards. Select.